Would you be turning to the book of 2 Thessalonians? Chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 2. I'd like to talk to you a little bit this morning about not being deceived. And as I as I read and study and try to uh, pray about things and ask the Lord to help me with these things, I see He warns us all through the Bible, all through the Scriptures, to not be deceived. Right. Now there is people that are deceived. And there is, he warns us in the latter days that people will come and say that I'm Christ, and uh, but don't be deceived with these things. Right. And he also teaches us to be careful how we listen to other doctrines and things of this nature, and and uh, uh, being deceived is a scary thing, I think. That after you get to thinking about it, being deceived is thinking that you're all right. Mm -hmm. And arguing with people that you are right, and they're the ones that are right, are deceived. Now, the devil does that to us, or most of us, uh, from time to time. He wants us to uh, feel like that even we're not saved, that we're not his, in his will. Uh, that we're, we're doing things that's contrary to his doctrines and things of this nature, and that we we get in such a terrible shape that we don't know which way is up, mm -hmm. and and this is going to happen in a greater well, it's already happening in a greater form because the devil has has been preached. The devil knows that he has about as much time as he used to have. Mm -hmm. And he wants to deceive everyone that he can. And people, it's a, it's, it's, if you get to thinking about, you think, or I think, that I'm all right, that everything is good with me, and there's no way in this world that anything can go wrong. Listen, that's, that is a dangerous condition to be Amen. in. Amen. We need to be drawn closer to the Lord. We need to beg His forgiveness. We need to pray to Him and ask Him to show us what He would have us to see and to understand what being deceived is. Mm -hmm. Because there's people, and we're going to be studying some of this probably in our Sunday school lesson, and I, I would like to get across this because sometimes some of the people have to leave and they're missing a good blessing from not hearing this, but some people are going to be deceived and, and when they die, I think that they're going to heaven and the Bible says that they'll stand before God and say, didn't we do this and didn't we do that? And he'll say, depart from me, I never knew you. Mm -hmm. And so this morning, this is what I want to read a few scriptures for and, and to tell you and, and exalt the Lord and put the devil down as much as I can possibly do it because he's my, he's my enemy. Mm -hmm. And he does everything that he can to hinder me. He does everything that God would let him do to hurt me in any way. And thank God this morning that God watches over me Amen. and protects me and helps me through the day. So in verse, uh, in chapter 2 of, of uh, 2 Thessalonians, he says, Now we beg you, or we beseech, beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, and that's talking about the rapture, our gathering together uh, un, un, uh, un, unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. So, Amen. Paul, Paul was the one that was called of God to preach the gospel to the Gentiles. 
And his, this is still some of Paul's writings here. And he's telling us this morning that, listen, there is a gathering, that there's coming a day when the rapture is going to happen. And listen, God is going to call out those that are his. He's going to call them out. And listen, just before that, there's going to be a great falling away. And listen, that that is the people that has been deceived. Right. Some of them thinking that this is not the rapture. And as soon as the rapture is over, there's going to be peace. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a, 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 a gathering of the governments and they're going to come together and declare peace. Israel is going to be right in there with them, mm -hmm. and the Antichrist is going to come on the scene, and he is going to uh, get with Israel. They're going to sign a treaty for a seven-year period, and they're going to declare peace on the earth. And for three and a half years, these people that were deceived, that wasn't caught up in the rapture, we're going to say, well, I was right. There was not no rapture. And there's going to be people going around <coughs> throughout all the world. Or you're going to see the comedians on television making fun of the rapture. And, and, and just like they make fun of everything else, they're going, to, they're going to have their big television shows and say, well, we knew it wasn't no rapture. We didn't see this and we didn't see that. But listen, they're deceived. Amen. They're deceived and they're going to stay here. And they're going to spend three and a half years of good times here. Israel is going to come in. Israel will build their temple probably in that, in that period. And listen, this old thing that's over our now is going to be torn down. And they're going to, they're going to say, man, this is it. But the Antichrist has deceived them. He's on, the, he's on, he's in head of everything, and he's leading them right on down the path of destruction, and he has deceived them. Now listen, he's also still busy today getting ready that people that's going to go into the, three, the first three and a half years of the tribulation. Now there's others say that the tribulation won't last won't, there won't be no first three and a half. It'll just be seven years of peace and then we we'll all go up. They other think, but listen, the Bible does not teach that. Mm -hmm. And so this morning, we have to be very careful on how that we study to show ourselves approved, rightly dividing the scriptures. Amen. And listen, people, this morning, we do not do as much as we should do in the way of studying and, and, and reading our Bibles and, and uh, uh, listening to the Word of God as it's preached and thinking upon these things because we're too busy. Mm -hmm. yeah. And listen, the devil this morning has given each of you a little extra work to mm -hmm. entertain you. Right. And you stay busy, busy, busy. I've got to do this. I can't do this. And listen, it don't amount to a hill of beans. Right. But listen, he's got you where he needs you and wants you. And he's got you entertained by a little worldly job or, or something like that. And so I beg of you this morning, realize what kind of a condition you are in and what's going on in your life and be not deceived because listen every time that the devil can keep you out of church every time that the devil can keep you from reading your bible every time the bible the devil can keep you from going to the to your place of prayer and praying and asking forgiveness he's he's got a victory over you right and he is very busy and listen he's not by himself he has got this world and he's got it all hooked together just like he wants it. And everything is working to keep you busy. Mm -hmm. Because, listen, you have all of these bills, all of these things, all of this to, to, to take care of. And you just ain't got time to serve God. And that's, that's, the, that's the, the, the truth of the matter. And we, and I say you, I say me too. Listen, I'm into it just like everybody else. And I, I thank the Lord that I have more time most and most people do because I'm, I'm I don't have to work 
But listen, still, all in all, I make excuses for not studying, for not going to church, and for, for not praying, and for these things, I still do it. And so this morning, we need to think about what we're doing and being not the thieves. And and in in the in the second Timothy, sometimes you write write you, you you read this, and we might if we get to it, but it, in the second Timothy 15, it tells us about showing ourselves study to show ourselves but notice here as we get back into our lesson here he said in verse 2 here that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us and listen there was letters wrote back then to people and paul and them said we didn't write it and we don't want you to be troubled about these things but listen, you need you need to watch out what you're looking at on TV. You need to look look out at what you hear coming into these ears and all of this and what people are saying to you because he is got his people walking around out here now and they're deceived. They think they're they think that they've been saved and listen, they're his saints and they're walking around spurting out all of this mess. And they're standing in the pulpits and, 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 and crying out to people with thousands and thousands of people in the congregation and telling them all of these things and these little fairy stories and things like that, saying, hey, you, this happened to me and I, I know that the Lord done it and all this. And listen, they are of the devil. Mm -hmm. And so this morning, don't believe everything that you hear. Right. Because the devil has got plenty of it going on, and he will bend and twist this word to where that you will be deceived. So he said here in verse 3, Let no man, no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. Now what is he saying? Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day, that is the day of the rapture. Mm -hmm. Listen shall come, except there come a falling away first. And what is that falling away? Listen, they are not believing the gospel. Mm -hmm. They're believing everything that's put out in these uh, magazines and, and they see flash up on the screens of the televisions and they hear on the radios. They're believing all of this junk and it's not so and they're believing it and here's what's going to happen. They are going to go to the time of the rapture and listen, they think they're saved. Right. They think everything is all right with them. And listen, God will send Jesus, and Jesus will say, come up hither. Mm -hmm. Listen, they'll be left right here to spend that tribulation period, and he will take his children out. And like I said a while ago, everything will go real smooth with them, and they'll ha-ha to themselves and say, yeah, I knew I was right. And listen, the devil is still deceiving them. Mm -hmm. And so here's what it is. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Now notice here in this, he says, falling away first, and that man of sin, notice that's one man, be revealed. He's going to be revealed. But now listen, here's the other one the son of perdition so there's two here and if you'll read in your in daniel where that the antichrist the man of sin was killed with a deadly wound and the the man of sin taken over he is going to be i believe this this thing here these these two people they're going to be there's going to be some kind of a uh, the deadly wound, and I don't, I don't know if he's going to be killed or what is going to happen to him. It says it's a deadly wound, but the thing of it is, we're dealing with the Antichrist, and if God gives him the power, he can resurrect this, or he can incarnate himself into another man and become the son of perdition. But anyway, this one is going to raise the other one or incarnate someone other, and he's going to strengthen him. And there, and and he says here. Uh, and, the, and the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God, now here, listen, 
sitting in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Now listen, this is happening during the, la the, the middle part of the, the tribulation period. When the Antichrist, the son, the son of perdition, comes in and makes that treaty with Israel, and in the last half of the three and a half years of the tribulation, this deal is cut off. He goes into the temple and he sits down and he says, I'm God. Mm -hmm. I'm God. And that time, the Jew will realize, hey, we've made a boo-boo. Mm -hmm. And listen, I don't know how many, how, 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 what, what kind of effect that's going to have on them. But listen, it says there in Matthew somewhere about if, if this thing happens on a Sabbath day, and that's the indication that they're talking to the Jews, he says, you, you don't go back up into your house to get your clothes and all, but just flee. Get out of the city because, listen, the Antichrist has taken over and he's going to try to kill every one of the Jews. And so here, again, he says, notice this in verse 5. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, this Paul, I told you these things. And now we know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. And so the Antichrist will be revealed in that, in that period of the, of the last three and a half years. He's not going to, they're not going to pay any attention to him the first three and a half because he's made a treaty with Israel. Everything's going real smooth. Israel gets to build their temple. They get to go in and worship. They, need to, they get to make their sacrifices and all of this. But listen, in the last three and a half, he said, hey, no more sacrifices, no more serving God in the temple, and he'll try his best to tear the thing down. He'll try to kill all the Jews, and that's when the last three and a half years of the tribulation starts, and it's going to be hell on earth. Mm -hmm. And this morning, uh, those that are deceived, listen, they're going to realize, oh my God, mm -hmm. I made a mistake. But listen, it's too late. Yeah. It's too late. And that's the same way this morning with people that are going around mis misleading or, 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 or that are deceived and think that they're saved and they're not saved. Mm -hmm. Listen, Brother Larry, has, Brother Larry has preached it time and time again. Try the spirits. Uh, make sure as, uh, of your salvation. Listen, that is a thing this morning that we all need to seek the leadership of God right. every day of our life, people. Make sure, make sure, make sure. Right. Because you then won't have to stand before God and say, uh, here are the words, I never knew you. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying this to, dis to discourage anybody or to convince anybody that they're not saved. I want people to understand that they need to... They need to do this each day. They need to uh, question God, if you would. They need to pray to God and, 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 and ask Him, Father, if, if, if I'm not saved, or, and, and, I, and I, I've often wondered, I say, I don't need to ask God that because I'm, I, He may think I'm doubting Him. Listen, people, He appreciates, I believe, of me questioning Him about my religion my salvation because listen i want to be with him Amen. i know i'm his child or i believe from all my heart that i'm his child but listen i still want to hear that holy spirit come in and, and speak to my soul Amen. and to to in, and, and help me and encourage my heart and for me to feel the presence of the holy spirit and that is the one of the things that and the Holy Spirit comes in and deals with you and speaks to your heart and uplifts you and all this. Listen, it's the best thing that you can happen to have happen to you. And this assures you, listen, that the Holy Spirit is still dwelling in and he's encouraging you. So Amen. you take heed to this thing this morning because, people, it's, it's, it's the thing. It's real. And I, I, want, I, want, you to, I, I want you to know this this morning that... That the devil is the father of all lies. Amen. He started them, and he is going to be there from the last lie is told, and when he's cast into the lake of fire, he'll be telling the lie then. 
And I guarantee if, if the angels are throwing him in, he'll say, I'm not the devil. I'm not the devil. He's the father of it, and he'll keep on. And listen, he lies to you and to me Amen. every day of our life. And sometimes we catch it, sometimes we don't. But he puts those little stinking thoughts into our heads and causes us to have those old foolish thoughts in our heads and we don't need to hear them. We don't need to even entertain them in any way. We need to say, get thee behind me, Satan, because listen, you're a hindrance to me. So here in verse 7, listen, for the mystery of iniquity that already work, only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Now he's right. And, and the mystery of iniquity is, it, it, and it, listen, it's, it's working, and, and, it's, and it's, it's got to be, it'll be here on this earth as long as uh, the devil will, will be let do these things. And he says, and then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. You can read about that over in Revelation 19, with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. Now notice here, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And so he has, he, these people here, he has bombarded them with all the deceivableness the unrighteousness, he has got them deceived, and they think that they're ready to fly away. Right. Listen, I, it's, it's pitiful, but all of these people, all of these people, and I'm saying these people, because I pray and hope that there's none in here that feels like that their works is part of their salvation, that it takes their works. It does not take your works to acquire salvation. Right. And listen, they're being deceived and they're saying, if I go out here and I give money to the poor, if I feed the hungry, if I help so-and-so and ain't -so, and so-and-so laying in the nursing home and all this, that's what God is looking for. No, it's not. Right. He is looking for a contrite spirit. He's, listen he's looking for a, a, a faithful heart. He's looking for a, a, a a salvation. He's 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 looking for something that we're not we've not got to do, and he has to do it by grace, and he saves us, and that's the only way that we can be saved. And listen, these things that these people are doing, they're deceived. Right. And this morning we need to understand that we don't have to do anything in the way of works to obtain salvation because that's what the devil's putting out to us. That's the war. That's what he's putting out to these churches. You go around here to these churches and they, they depend on everything in this world for salvation. And then last of all, they'll throw a little Jesus in. Mm -hmm. The people is wrong. Amen. And, and, and they're deceived. And so this is this is what's going what is happening. And then he says here in verse 12. Uh, our 11, and uh, for this cause God shall send them strong delusions that they should believe a lie. Now these are those that he, it's your, that you're, that I just read about that's practicing all this unrighteousness, deceivableness through the devil, and he says here that God shall send them a strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth but have pleasure in unrighteousness. Right. And so hear me, hear me, hear me. These people are, are being deceived, and you see what's going to happen to them. But he says in verse 13, but we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. Now, Amen. this... This, this is all, he's chosen you, but listen, that don't keep you from being bombarded by Satan, the old Antichrist, by his little imps and everything. Listen, because 
God has not God has not put them chains around him yet and thrown him in the lake of fire. He's still much alive out there. Right. Bless your heart. He's going to bombard you with everything that he can. He's going to cause you problems in every way he can. And so don't take be taken in by him and don't be deceived because here he says here that you might all believe a lie and be damned because uh, because who believeth not the truth but had pleasure in righteousness. But we are bound to give thanks always to God. Now look in 14. For unto he called you by our gospel, and this is Paul's gospel, to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. And when I say it's Paul's gospel, listen, Paul received this on the road to Damascus, or on the, on the, I believe the road to Damascus. But anyway, when he was, when, when God spoke to him and said, Paul, Paul, why persecute thou me? Listen, he received the gospel. Amen. He, he went forth out preaching the gospel, and, and he is preaching that, the, that Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary for our sins, shed his blood, and made an atonement for our sins with his blood, and that by that we're saved. And that's Paul's gospel. Amen. And so here he says in the last, last in the verse 16, Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which ha have loved us and have given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good work. Amen. So he's not saying here, do these works to, to say saved. But he's just saying this, that he will comfort your hearts because you have a desire to do those works because you're a child of God and, uh, and, and you've been saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. And so he's saying, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good work. So now I want to read uh, 2 Timothy 3, just to, and, and I'll uh, not go on. Let me find that for you. Hmm. I can't remember which side Timothy is on. 2 Timothy 3. 2 Timothy 3 and 1. Chapter 3, verse 1. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Right. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetousness, bolster, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural, without natural affection. Right. Incontentions, fierce, despisers of those that are good. These are things that those that are deceived will be doing. Traitors, headed, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, thereof, the power of God. For from such turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive, silly women, laden with sin, led away with divers bus, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Right. These are the deceivers. These are the ones that will, will discourage you. These are the ones that will cause you to uh, go astray. And when you go astray, you're saved. And go astray, you have to have a little encouragement from the Lord and sometimes it comes through chastisement mm -hmm. and sometimes chastisement is gets pretty rough but anyway uh, don't be deceived amen just don't be deceived just just completely uh, when you when, when when thoughts come to your mind when thoughts come to your mind that don't sound good you can, you can put a circle around and say that's of the devil Mm -hmm. because he's here he's here this morning just as sure or at some of his imps he's here but praise God I want to tell you something I believe with all my soul this morning that there's angels here too Amen. 
there's angels here, and they're listening in, and they will make a report back to Jesus, no doubt, and say, we was down there, and this is what we heard. And those people are trying to live for you. Just as sure as this world, people, there's angels present here this morning, and there's imps here, probably, maybe even say, I don't know, I can't see them. But I do know this, that I believe with all my soul that, there's, that they're here, those, those spirits are here. And this morning, we need to thank the Lord mm -hmm. for everything that he's doing for us. In this church, hey, you know, you might get, you might get disappointed sometimes and, and say, well, we're not doing anything. But listen, when we can come to this building and we can read God's word and we can sing songs of praise and we can entertain angels unaware. Amen. Listen, we've got something going for us. Amen. If this old building falls down and we go bankrupt and we have to go out here in a barn somewhere, listen, we can still have this pleasure. Amen. So this morning, lift up your head. Be encouraged because we've got something here that there's lots and lots of people think they've got, but they ain't got. Right. So I, I thank you this morning that I was able to read God's word to you. And I hope that he'll, I know he will, the Holy Spirit will take that word and he'll use it. And he'll find a lodging place in your hearts and somewhere along the line, some of this will come back to you and you can rejoice in it and you can feel the leadership of the Lord. And I thank you all this morning for praying for me. I thank you for uh, listening to me and uh, I, I thank the Lord for giving me this opportunity to teach us. Thank you all. Amen.